Hello dear friends and welcome to Arty Not Farty. My name is Julia and today we are having a watercolour experiment along with some hilarious stamps from art impressions that my sister gave me and I will use them in my Easter card series along with these luscious squares of pigment that are Kuretake Gansai Tambi watercolour set. I do hope I didn't butcher that. To get those lines that doesn't smudge, I ink up with archival black soot and when a stamp is new it often needs to be inked up more than once. So I use my stamping platform and you can see that my middle lady there doesn't give a good impression at first. But by the time I stamp my second image I only need to ink up twice. Now I intend to use my watercolors for both background and images because I need the practice. And how cute are these ladies sunbathing. I can see myself and my friends like that when we are retired. But I also know my grandmother who asked for Easter cards have girlfriends and I hope these cards bring them a smile. As always I put down a coat of my lightest color and then use a darker shade to, and water to give these ladies some shadows. I try to make my ladies match by using the same color for bathing suits, shoes and earrings. And here is when I run into trouble. My camera ran out of battery and I didn't notice. So here we have the second tree of ladies and I chose to color their outfits with my palette of Gansai Tambi pearl colors which have a lot of shimmer to them. I give them a light coat of clean water first and the next coat is of color is diluted with lots of water. Then when I bring in more color I focus on the shadows and all the small details. I use a paper towel to lift color when I use too much and bit by bit these ladies come to life. When I have colored in all their outfits like hats, earrings and tiny shoes I go back to the original Gansai Tambi watercolor set and color in their drinks, chairs and their beautiful hairstyles grey. Then we are left with their bodies and I use my lightest skin tone. Remember these ladies live in the north of Sweden and will be very pale because we hardly see the sun at all during winter. But I bring in a darker skin tone and some pink. Pink, because these ladies are already sunburned. And I put the pink on their cheeks, noses and chests. The next step is to create a beautiful, whimsical garden for my ladies to sit in. So I sketch out a lot of my wonky flowers and start coloring them with the same watercolors as before. As always I put down water first, then my lightest shade of green and finally I fill in all the shadows with a darker green, always using water to blend and a paper towel to lift color when I put down too much. The next flower is this bush of tangled hearts and I give it a generous coat of water first. Then I color it with a light pink and lots of water. So then I can drop in the darker pink and let them blend on their own. But help the blending along sometimes with more water and light pink. Since I'm making two cards, I drew two versions of each flower, but I only show one of each, and all of them didn't make the cut, but I save them for future projects. This blue flower is done like the one before. I cover it with water and the light blue, and then I can drop in the dark blue and let them blend together, adding more dark blue when needed and helping the blend with water and light blue.
You who know me don't expect me to draw realistic, and I wanted something to give my ladies shade, so I made giant toadstools and make them work as umbrellas for the sun. I color them with a very diluted red and work my way to a dark red at the top. For the stem I used a beige diluted with water. I must admit I wasn't sure myself how these cards would be brought together, but I have my vision and continue coloring flowers, hoping it all makes sense in the end. I am so thankful that you are watching my video, and if you feel like subscribing, I would love to have you. So we are at the part where I color in the smaller, space-filling flowers and leaves. And I want those daisies to be white, but I also want to give them more depth. And I start with the smallest amount of lime green at the base of the petal, where it meets the center. And I use some clean water to drag that green out and let it fade out to white. I even took a light gray and went around the petal and blended any harsh lines with water. The camera didn't pick up the grey shadow, but the green is there. And then I put down my yellow in the middle of both flowers and make my shadows with a deeper yellow and an orange. Next I put a quick coat of light green on that leaf and lots of water and then I just dab on the darker green. Those polka dot leaves are colored with a light pink and then I bring in the darker pink at the top. Now let's move on to the easiest watercolor background paired with splatters that conceal many mistakes. I spray the back of my backgrounds with water to avoid curling and give each background panel a light wash of green and blue. Remember, I plan to cover them up, so all I need is a whimsical and light background. I use Gansai Tambi pearl colors to splatter on all the colors I used earlier, and that's it. But splatters can be used to spice up something you aren't entirely happy with. So I do the same splatters again on all of the flowers that I didn't have white in them. And I instantly feel better about my flowers and can move on to do the sentiment. I chose a sentiment from the stamp set that reads It's exhausting being this fabulous. I don't know how we do it. I use my anti-static powder bag to get rid of any tackiness so the embossing powder only stick to my stamped sentiment. I stamp it in Versamark embossing ink and cover it with Wow's Vanilla White Embossing Powder and heat set until it's white and shiny against that black cardstock. And I do it twice for both cards. You can, of course, use any opaque white embossing powder. This WOW Vanilla White is just my personal choice. When I have both sentiment embossed, I trim them down to thin strips. And I will pair this sassy sentiment with a happy Easter in Swedish. Glad Posk. 
Now, let's put these cards together and you can see my lovely ladies and the flowers I plan to use. I start with cutting the biggest green flower in two and glue one of the halves onto my background. Then I use the ladies to see where to put their toadstool so it gives them shade and I glue that down too. I glue down the tangled hearts at an angle and the blue flower next. I use a paper towel to avoid glue seeping out and then it's time for the leaves and the light blue flower hanging off the edge and finally I glue down those daisies. When all the flowers are stuck down and dry, I use a pair of scissors to cut off anything hanging off the edge of the panel. It's finally time for my ladies and this was probably the most exhausting part. I fill the back of the images with foam tape and cut tiny strips to build up even the smallest, thinnest details. Then I put some liquid glue on and glue down my ladies in that whimsical spring garden. I glue down the sentiments and put that whimsical panel on a slightly bigger black panel and with that my cards are done. I lost some footage of the other card but I have some close-up pictures of both cards and I hope you had some fun and feel inspired. Until the next time, see you soon.